there, channel members, friends, and followers from around the world. This is Q8 Pilot, your host for tonight's show. It is 1800 hours Zulu, 2100 hours local time here in Kuwait City, Kuwait, where this live broadcast is being streamed live to you. I want to welcome all of you guys to this stream. We have with us today Boeing Corp. Mike, welcome aboard from Logan, New Jersey. We have Caden with us. I think you're a new... Uh, uh, new on the stream, uh, Caden, so welcome aboard to the channel. Welcome to the stream. Glad to have you here. Uh, you are from Wales. Oh, how cool. Welcome, my friend. Alex, hello, my friend. Welcome aboard. Thanks for your support. Badger, good evening to you, my friend, and thank you very much for your continued support, my friend. Emilio, hello from Chile. Welcome aboard, my friend. Chris Patton, hello, my friend. Welcome Fium from Houston. Welcome, German. Hello, my friend. Welcome aboard. Aero Knowledge, welcome, my friend. Bill Barrett, welcome aboard. And welcome to the membership uh, here at the QA Pilot ch channel. Um, Steven, howdy. How are you doing, my friend? And we have also sh sh um, Schlaxim. Schlaxim, good evening to you, my friend. Welcome aboard. Uh, E2 from Finland, welcome aboard. We have somebody from Finland with us today. I'm very glad that you're here so that you can check my uh, pronunciation and uh, keep me in check. Yeah, Mike, hello, Mike. Welcome from Toronto, Canada. Danny Roots, welcome aboard. Glad to have you all with us uh, during this live stream today. We are at Helsinki in Finland. And as you can see, uh, it is uh, pretty snowy and the weather is, is pretty cold right now. Very cloudy conditions. Uh, of course, today we're not flying in real time. But we are flying in real weather and we can see the AI traffic here um, at Helsinki um, Airport. Uh, we are today going to uh, Rovaniemi. I hope I said that correctly. Rovaniemi. Rovaniemi or um, uh, Echo Romeo Foxtrot Oscar is Santa Claus's official home. So that's what we're going today. Uh, I'm very excited to do this flight for the very first time and uh, we are going to be doing so aboard the Mad Dog, the MD-80. Uh, I'm not sure why this aircraft doesn't get a lot of love and I don't see a lot of streamers, uh, you know, flying this aircraft. I think it's a pretty nice aircraft. I think it's pretty uh, well made for uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator, but yeah, I'm not sure why it doesn't get much love. I think it's lovely. Look at it. I mean, it does look like a, a really mad dog. And yeah, today we're going to be taking it for a flight. Uh, for It's about one hour and uh, 10 minutes. We're going to be cruising at a uh, final uh, cruise altitude of about 32,000 feet. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, let's get started. Stephen, hello, my friend. Welcome aboard. Uh... Oh, you have an interview. Good luck to you, my friend. Good luck to you. I wish you all the best. Omari, hello, my friend. Welcome aboard. And we have also Wycliffe Barrett is in the house. Thank you very much, Wycliffe. I'll be sure to check your review. All right. Uh, we're going to hop into the cockpit of the beautiful uh, MD-80 uh, by Leonardo Software. And uh, I really like the cockpit of this thing. It it just really looks beautiful uh, very you know kind of very old looking uh, aircraft uh, very old looking panel and you can see all the scratches and you know the aging of the elements inside the cockpit all right let's go ahead and uh, bring up the electronic flight bag and uh, set the aircraft weight and balance and then we'll uh, start uh, powering up the aircraft and we'll also summon uh, our passengers to uh, this flight. All right, let's go to the setup. From the setup, uh, we don't need anything. Uh, by the way, Simbrief has just uh, received a facelift. Uh, if you haven't uh, already seen it, just make sure you log out of your account, log back in, and uh, you'll see a brand new facelift. It looks phenomenal. Very, very nice. Yeah, good work by the guys uh, at Navigraph. Uh, all right, so let's go to, uh, no, we don't need performance for now. We need the uh, weight and balance. That's what we need. All right, so we're going to just say Simbrief, and that should load everything from our Simbrief plan. Yeah, we got everything here. Uh, we've got the takeoff, load and balance, and all that good stuff. 
And uh, let's see here. Um, all right, just guys, give me one second. Uh, something uh, quick here I need to deal with. Um, all right, here we go. Um, all right, let's see. All right, so what we're going to do is uh, we have our passage 47, 48 in the Area B section. Total passage 95. We've got all this information here. Everything here looks good. And uh, we're going to head now over to the overhead panel and start programming, uh, powering up the aircraft. All right, so we're going to come up here and uh, we are going to turn on the battery switch. Battery is on. And we're going to make sure the start pump is on to start our APU. But first, we're going to arm the emergency lights. Uh, we'll leave the non-smoking signs. Actually, let's turn these on. Uh, let's see here. All right, so non-smoking is on. The fasten seatbelt sign uh, is on as well. And uh, let's see here. We have uh, the uh, ma APU master on start. And once we start it, you'll see that the EGT starts rising. Uh, it starts pretty slow, and then it kind of, you know, it speeds up uh, towards about 60 or 70 percent. Right, so we'll just wait for the APU to start, and we'll perform all the checks uh, and tests to make sure the aircraft is in flight-worthy conditions, and then we will... Uh, let's go ahead, actually, and call our passengers uh, into the aircraft now as we start the APU. So we're going to go to GSX, and we're going to say uh, boarding, request boarding. Boarding requested. All right, there we go. And we're going to use Swissport International. Why not? All right. All right, the APU is available, so we can go ahead now and put the aircraft's uh, electrical system on the APU buses. <laughs> All right, that is done, and we can cancel the master caution on both sides. Excellent, so now the uh, aircraft is on APU power. We're gonna head over to the top here of the uh, uh, overhead panel, and we're gonna perform the tests. Uh, we're gonna begin here with the flight recorder test. We need to hold for five seconds. All right, and we see the light illuminated. That checks okay, the cockpit voice recorder is functional. Then we're going to come here and do the wind shear test. The first flight of the MD-80 was on October 18th, 1979, and the launch customer was Swiss Air. Oh, how cool. Thanks for the info there, uh, Boeing Corp. Mike. Appreciate it. MD, good evening to you, my friend. Welcome aboard. All right. And uh, the ground proximity warning test. All right, excellent. And mock speed warning test. Excellent. Stall test. System one, system two. Excellent. And the anti skid. Let's test that. All right, we can see it in the display. Uh, the left, right, uh, inbound, and out outbound anti skid are operational per design intent and we can test the PA system and that checks okay as well excellent all right all right perfect so everything works well here we're going to turn on the bleeds we're going to leave the bleeds on auto and uh, so we can supply some cold air to the cabin or well not cold actually we need to put some warm air into the cabin today so we're going to uh we're going to add a little bit more just because the temperature is uh, pretty cold outside. So we want to make sure our passengers are warmed up in the back. And uh, we can set this to primary. And everything looks good here. We're going to go ahead and lock the uh, flight deck door. 
and uh, everything else here we can do the test here make sure all the lights are operational which they are and now we can start programming the mcdo or the uh, fmc we're going to set this to captain and we're going to turn on the windshield any fog and anti-ice excellent everything here looks good excellent we can now start programming the fmc let's uncage the uh, display it looks like it is raining as well today right there we go and uh, the display is uncaged we're going to turn on the auxiliary and uh, trans hydraulic uh, pumps and now we can see the hydraulic system is operational excellent we're going to now head over to the uh, mcdu or the fmc uh, whichever way uh, you know whatever you want to call it uh, and uh, we can set things up yeah i think this is a good so you guys can see properly what i'm doing we're going to head to the B button once and uh, set the altimeter for the flight. Let's go to position in it. And we're going to go to uh, the departure airport, um, Echo uh, Foxtrot Hotel Kilo. And enter that here. That's uh, our departure airport. Set it in the uh, IRS position. And then we can go to the route. Uh, as you can see, we have the origin airport. And we can select, uh, let's see here, EFHK and EFRO. All right, and let's see here. Does that work? Absolutely. Excellent. All right, so we have the flight route there from Simbrief. And we're going to go to the departures and select our departure. Now, for this, uh, we're going to very quickly bring up our friendly uh, sim brief plan and we're just gonna load the plan uh, so we don't waste too much time there so we have the departure today from um, Helsinki at uh, runway 15 through the Tever 3 Delta departure so we're gonna select 15 and the Tever 3 so our next page that's the Tever 3 Delta and then we're gonna go to the route once more and uh, we're going to select now the arrival and the arrival is going to be through the nip uh, nippy to charlie runway 21 all right let's go to nippy to charlie that's the one there and an ILS yankee ILS yankee 21 excellent no transition so we're going to go to the route activate and execute all right so let's just make sure there are no discontinuities uh, along our route to uh santa's home and everything looks here good here to me all right that's our center fix the final fix and then the runway so everything looks pretty cool excellent yeah Looks like de-icing is a good idea prior to departure, uh, without a doubt, uh, Boeing Corp. Mike, yeah. Lassie, hello, my friend. Welcome aboard. Nice to see you flying to my hometown. Well, I am glad I'm flying to your hometown today, and that is the very first time I fly there. So, yeah, I'm quite excited. Uh, we'll see. And, and the weather isn't, uh, isn't great uh, either, so it's, it should be a very interesting flight. And hopefully we'll avoid all the pilot-induced errors uh, in, in the last time I flew the MD-80, uh, we've done a few mistakes on the approach and therefore our landing wasn't, you know, the perfect one. But hopefully today we'll avoid those mistakes. All right, let's go to, uh, we're going to set our fuel and the fuel, if we look here, is 7,950 and uh, that's in kilos. So that's uh, 7.9, so 7.9 slash uh, a and we put that here all right and the zero fuel weight uh, is something we have to get from our uh, efb so the zero fuel weight is 50 504 56 504 56 uh, we're gonna stick that here that automatically uh, uh enters uh, 50.5 the reserves is 2, and the cost index is already set 35, and the cruise altitude for the flight today, I believe, uh, Simbrief is going to give us uh, 36, but that is not possible 
Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to put 32,000 feet. So 320 for the final cruise altitude. And for the cruise wind, uh, we can just bring some brief here again. We'll go to the weather. As you can see, the top of climb wind is 237, 31, 237, uh, 31. Guys, what are what are what are your thoughts on on the? Uh, good evening, Paolo. How are you doing, Hector? Hello, my friend. Welcome aboard. It's been a long time. How have you been? Um, what are your thoughts on the uh, MD11 by Leonardo Software, and why do you think most streamers actually do not fly this aircraft? I don't see much love given to it. So any thoughts there uh, are are welcome. I'd like to understand what is, you know, why is the community not very fond of this aircraft? All right, ESA deviation is minus seven. So uh, we're gonna say minus seven. And we enter that here, excellent. We've got the transition altitude, 5,000 feet. And we're gonna go to the takeoff. All right, now, so for the takeoff, we need to do some calculations here. So we're gonna go back to the performance. Uh, the airport is uh, Echo Foxtrot Hotel. Oops. <laughs> All right, let's do this again. Uh, this time we'll use the keypad, EFHK. Uh, condition is, uh, is medium to poor, and the current wind is uh, uh, let's see, what is the average wind? Why is it not giving me the wind? All right, let me uh, let me find out. Uh, you know where we have the wind? We have the wind here in SimTool Kit Pro. Uh, if we go here and uh, let's see. If we go to the weather and we have the wind here, so 170.10 knots. Yeah, it's nowhere there. All right, so 170, 10 knots, 170, and 10. Excellent. And the current temperature uh, is, uh, I believe, let's see here. Uh, the current temperature is one. Wow, one degree Celsius. Wow. All right. We are departing runway 15. All right. Flaps, optimum settings. Q and H is 1012. 1012. And the packs are going to be off, uh, AI off, packs on for departure. And uh, then we need the takeoff weight. All right. So we need the takeoff where we're going to go back to weight and balance and the takeoff weight uh, is, uh, let's see here, takeoff weight 58086, 58506, uh, okay, calculate. Excellent, and we have our V1, V-Rotate, and V2, 128, 142, and uh, 151. All right, 128. By the way, we forgot to turn on the pneumatic pressure. All right, that's much better now. All right, we can now enter our uh, speeds uh, in the FMC, which is uh, 128, 142, 151. 128, 142, and uh, 151, 151. All right, perfect. The pre-flight uh, check is done and complete. And now, actually, if we want, we can uh, go and take a look at the aircraft. Uh, so the uh, first officer can perform the walk around just to make sure everything is in order uh, before our flight. <laughs> That's pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah. All right. Uh, we're going to make sure the pitot covers are removed and uh, there are no leakages. Uh, everything's looking good. The engines are in good condition. No leaks. The wings are okay. I can see uh, some icing there forming on the wings. So a good idea to use the de-icing trucks uh, there. We're going to order some fluid fuel uh, to make sure the uh, aircraft is de-iced uh, before our departure. 
And uh, we're going to check the other side as well. Let's check the uh, landing gear. And we don't see any leaks. Everything looks good. Excellent. Again, some ice on the, on the wings there that needs to be uh, taken care of. But everything else looks uh, pretty good to me. All right. So we are now ready. Uh, let's go ahead and set the, uh, um, the MC, the glare shield. Uh, so the altitude, final altitude is going to be um it's going to be 32,000 feet 32 is now set 32 excellent and uh let's see here the speed here so normally i set this to 250 knots uh but the correct way is 151 which is v2 so 151 is set Flight directors are on, on both sides. And ladies and gentlemen, we have with us Carl Childers is in the house. Hello, my friend. Welcome aboard. Glad to have you here, and thank you very much for your support, Carl. Appreciate it, my friend. And uh, Stefan says, no, uh, not just streamers. I'm pretty frequently the only MD-80 around on Batsum Network. I'm not sure why. I, I wonder why. Why is this aircraft not very loved, you know? It's great. I, I love it. I mean, I really like the uh, MD-11. Uh, I don't know. Maybe because it's complex somewhat. I don't know. Uh, could be. I don't know. Loop A test is good. Loop B test is good. And uh, everything here looks good. All right. Perfect. Uh, the passengers are aboard the aircraft. Uh, all the luggage, luggage has been loaded as well. And uh, we are good to go. So we're going to turn on the anti-collision lights and uh, the position lights. And we are now ready to uh, push out of our position. Uh, we are going to set this one on the legs page. And we're going to set this on climb. All right. All is good. And now we can call the... Ah, one more thing we need to do is the flaps today is 6.5. And if we go to the weight and balance, we are going to need the takeoff center of gravity. So 6.5, if we come here and set, I think it's already set to 6.5. And the CG is 19.5, which is already set. That gives us a trim of about 4.5, which is kind of set. All right. That's 4.5, excellent. And uh, let's go ahead and now and call GSX services and uh, depart Helsinki. All right, there we go, GSX. And prepare for pushback and departure. Do you want to, re do you want the, uh, do you want to, yeah, I want to request pushback, that's what I said. <laughs> Ice warning. Do you run a request de icing treatment? Absolutely. The icing vehicles are coming now. Absolutely. We got to do that uh, because otherwise we might run into trouble. So I think it's because the layout is different and it's harder to fly, figure out compared to the other jets. That's probably right. That, that would be my guess too, uh, uh, Carl. Yeah. Martin Farkas, hello, my friend. Welcome aboard. The reason that people don't stream the Enlargemad, uh, maybe that not, not really common in the skies nowadays. Maybe, yeah, that could be it as well. All right. So we're going to wait for the de-icing trucks to uh, arrive and uh, get the uh, de-icing treatment. There we go. That's the de-icing trucks arriving into uh, our position here, uh, stand 2-5. Uh, the MD-80 is true old-school pilot's airplane, a complex aircraft by today's standards, and I think the complexity uh, of the MD-80 takes a learning curve that most people are afraid to take. That is, uh, that is probably also, somewhere along those, I think, is the, it lies the reason, yeah, with everything else that you guys said. Uh, I've got, anyway, I've got a jet, don't forget the pneumatic X feeds on uh, to on. APU air to on, packs to off, uh, the hydraulic pumps below the FO, clock to high, trans and auxiliary to on for startup. Yeah. All right, we're going to use uh, fluid type A. 
And we're gonna go with 50%. We begin treatment now and observe fluid type 1. Concentration at 50%. I will call you back when ready. Alright, thank you very much. We'll wait for your call. I've got to say, this is really cool. Alright, so while the de-icing takes place, uh, we are going to make sure... Yeah, it is, it is very cool. It is very awesome. Alright. You could still hear the uh, de-icing while, uh, while in the cockpit. Uh, all right, let's make sure everything is good here. We're going to turn off the APU bleed now. All right, APU bleed is off. Uh, we are ready to start the aircraft. By the way, uh, cabin pressure, that's the landing altitude. We are, yeah, I think that's the about right. And and the icing completed. And the icing code is fluid type 1. Concentration at 50%. I am disconnecting. All right, good everything day. looks good. And pneumatic pressure is uh, already set. All right, we are ready for engine start now. We're just going to wait for... Uh, I like the... Uh, I like that. Uh, that's the gate, gate 25. And, uh, yeah, the time is off because I probably didn't set the time. The chocks are on. Uh, all right, so let's come here to uh, the ground. Uh, let's see, gra aircraft Due to ground. icing conditions. Please stand by for engine start until push completed and brake set. All right, we'll do just that. I think we're good. All right. Hello, Captain. We are ready for pushback. All right, let's get the uh, pins now locked uh, in and we'll be on our way. There's a Ryanair departing there. Where is our guy? Ah, oh, there he is. Check completed. Bypass pin inserted. What's that? He's inside the aircraft. <laughs> I don't think GSX uh, properly supports this aircraft, but that's all right. All right, pushback is going to start in a second, uh, and we cannot start our engines yet due to icing conditions. Uh, galley power to on, and uh, we'll leave the start pumps for now. Locking gear. All right. Is that a payment? Uh, yes, uh, Boeing Corp. Uh, both airports today that we're flying are courtesy of MK Studios. Um, uh, quick pushback, pushback facing south, um, facing northeast on Alpha Charlie. Now that I don't know. Um, all right, doesn't matter. Let's just do that. Release parking brakes. All right, let's release the parking brakes. Commencing push. Due to icing conditions, please stand by for engine start until push completed and brake set. All right, we'll do just that. No worries at all. And here's a look at the wings, beautiful wings of the MD-80 as we push out of our position. And the other side as well. Lovely. All right, we'll just wait for the uh, 
for the pushback to complete. Um, so both airports that we're flying to and uh, from and to are both uh, by MK Studios. And if you are interested in any of these airports, just type exclamation scenery and you should, should get the link to both airports. Uh, 738 NGX, does the jet in cold and dark, uh, that I'll come on the screen uh, with this, does the jet in cold and dark, uh, the tablet come? Yeah, so the screen, you can turn the screen on or off, the screen is off, uh, and you can remove it completely, by the way, from the uh, control panel, from the standalone control panel for the Leandro software. So you can remove it if you don't want it. Um, but yeah. Man, the weather looks really bad. All right, parking brake set. And we can now start our engines. All right, perfect. Let's go ahead and uh, go here to Systems A. And we're going to uh, remove the guards. And we're going to start with the right engine first. But we need our fuel pumps. Uh, there isn't much fuel. Uh, there's uh, very little fuel in the center tank. So I'll keep them off for the flight. Uh, all right, call attendant reset. Um, everything here is good. All right, let's go and start with the right engine. Perfect. Now we should start seeing the uh, engine spooling. Mm, why is it? Ah, I, I know why. There we go. Uh, these are off. These are on. And now we should have the engine starting. There we go. All right, now we can see that the engine is uh, spooling. And at about 20% of N2, we will introduce fuel. One thing I notice about the MD-80 is that uh, the engine sounds are almost virtually none when you are inside the cockpit. All right, 21, 21%. So we're going to go ahead and turn on the fuel. Right, and that should get the engines running, as you can see now. And let's go ahead and confirm a good engine start for GSX so we can disconnect. All right, let's uh, confirm. To ground. We have a good engine start. You can disconnect. I got it yesterday looking forward to flying. I'm used to flying the MD-80 on X-Plane by Rotate. How do it compare both? Uh, actually... Both are great. I do like the visuals on this one a little better than the X-Plane version, um, but they both fly great. I love this the Leonardo software. Uh, I've had this aircraft for um, P3D as well, and I just absolutely love it. Uh, I, I love this aircraft. I, I love anything, by the way, from the classical era. So I like to fly older aircraft, such as uh, this one, you know, the older 737s, uh, the seven, uh, the seven four two. Uh, I like those planes a lot. Um, all right, so we have a good start on the uh, right engine. Let's go and start the Active left engine. Disconnected. Bypass pin removed. <clears throat> and we're going to wait, and uh, t we're going to take a look at the engine left spooling. Clear. Right is clear. There we go. And at about twenty percent N two, we will introduce fuel, and then we'll be good to go. Excellent. Right, that's 20%, 21. All right, let's go ahead and introduce fuel. All right, and now we're getting the engine started. Excellent. Uh, a few more checks here. Uh, we're going to, no, let's leave that for now. All right. So parking brake, engine load for, all right, chins are off. Okay. All right, actually from the outside, you can hear the engine sounds are quite nice. Right, we have a good start on both engines. Excellent. Uh, so we're going to come here to the overhead panel. We're going to turn off the system. Watch the passenger volume needle, how it vibrates as the announcements are made in the cabin. I love those little details. All right, let's close the guards here. Excellent. And everything here is good. Everything here is good. 
And we can now turn off the APU. All right, and APU master can go to the off position as well. And now we can turn on the bleeds. All right, bleeds are set. Excellent. And we no longer need, uh, by the way, the pneumatic pressure. So those can go off. We're going to set the rejected takeoff, auto brake to rejected takeoff, and we're going to arm it. And we're going to arm the speed brakes as well. And now we're going to set our flaps to, uh, I believe it was 6.5. Uh, let's go to performance. Uh, flaps selected is optimum. So flaps 6.5. Everything is set on this side. So we're going to set it here. Uh, let's see here, 6.5. So that is uh, 6, and that is 6.5. Excellent. And now all we need to do is set the flaps here. And now you should see it pointing to... Now you see flaps take off, and you don't see the disagree, so everything is good. Just to make sure that everything is set up correctly in the, uh, in the MD-80, uh, just release the parking brake and uh, push the uh, move the throttle uh, all the way to maximum power and back and now we know that everything is uh, is okay all right taxi lights are dimmed and uh, everything here is looking pretty good for our departure uh, so we're just going to go to the end of this taxiway and make a right turn uh, onto uh, Taxi Alpha Charlie and head over to runway 15 for departure. I'm going to hide the yokes uh, here just so that we can see. Uh, we're going to set this to arc. Uh, let's see. This is uh, plan. This is map. All right. And we're going to reduce the range so we can see exactly where we're going. Excellent. And we are now pretty much uh, set and ready. Takes a little bit of time to, uh, Matt Flight Sim, hello my friend, welcome aboard, Dome Seth, welcome aboard my friend, glad to have you here with us. Thank you very much guys for being here, appreciate your support. All right, here we go. <clears throat> uh, it takes a little bit of learning for sure to learn the MD-80, uh, not, not very straightforward, uh, but nonetheless, a uh, very... Um, enjoyable aircraft to fly and um, yeah I think we want to go that way for runway 15 you know with all this icing not exactly sure where we're going but I believe runway 15 is right over there yeah right there if we go here and then make the left turn at the end of the taxiway Runway one uh, five should be right over there. All right. So if we set the uh, heading bug to one five, there we go. About right here. One four seven. Runway heading. Beautiful. Do great work. First time I've caught one of your streams, my friend. Smiley face. Morgan, hello, Morgan. Welcome aboard, and thank you very much for your super chat and for your kind words there. I appreciate it. Again, this is the DX2 problem that uh, we normally get here, but that's okay. Uh, we'll take care of it once we are. Uh, it's gonna, it's gonna cause us an issue as we taxi down the runway, but hopefully. It won't be too much of an incident for us, but that's the own way we can see, so that's okay. I hope that this issue is fixed in the uh, in the sim update 12. Now the MD-80 is very different on the ground than any other aircraft, and this is uh, simulated in uh, in Microsoft Flight Simulator with this uh, aircraft. Uh, I really like, by the way, MK's work on this uh, airport. 
very, very detailed, and uh, all the seasons are very properly, uh, you know, represented uh, in the aircraft, uh, in the uh, airport scenery, uh, as you can see here, just brilliant. Uh, again, Morgan, thank you very much for your five pound uh, super chat there. Appreciate it, my friend. Thank you. Uh, very generous of you and very kind as well. Thank you very much. All right, let's go here, head to the runway. Um, is it this one here? Is it? I'm not sure if this is a taxiway. Uh, so maybe you need to go to Zulu. Um, yeah, let me, I'm not sure. All right, let's, let's, uh, let's go to Zulu. No, that's, that's okay. We're just going to cross the runway there and cross uh, over to runway 15. Okay. That's perfectly fine. All right, let's go there. Yeah, it's it's a fun aircraft to fly. And once, once you really get the hang of it, it's uh, actually very, very enjoyable. Uh, I do like it a lot. I'm not sure if there is a taxiway at the end. I'm unable to see if there is actually a taxiway at the far end of this runway uh of this uh, taxiway so you know what let's let's do let's do that looks like there is a turn ah it's because of the issue that we're having with dx12 it's kind of patch is not shown there all right all right got it i got a little bit disoriented there Mr. Martini, hello, my friend, and Andy, welcome aboard. We have also X Pinball, welcome aboard, my friend. <laughs> welcome, welcome, guys. Yeah, now I can see the taxiway. All right, perfect. All right, here's the turn for uh, runway 15, Bianchi Bravo taxiway. All right, here's the turn. All right, that is our runway. And that's the hold short point for our runway. Well, let's go ahead and turn on our landing lights. One thing to note on the strobe lights for uh, for the MD-80s, they are automatic. They only turn on after takeoff. And the uh, flood lights as well as the wing lights. All right, that's our runway there, and we are cleared for takeoff. We're going to set the EPR to takeoff power, and uh, we are good to go. I love this airport, and I love the work by MK Studios. Highly recommended airport. Both airports today are uh, courtesy of, uh, oh, look at that. We can't see a thing. All right, hopefully no aircraft on the, on the runway there. All right. Look at those lights. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are lined up runway 15. We are cleared for takeoff. We're going to take a note of that, uh, of the contour in the in the runway. All right, let's go ahead and uh, set the power. We're going to make sure we don't do what we did last time. Auto throttle. And toga. Take off thrust set. All right. Off we go. Eighty knots cross check. All right, V one, rotate. Tell you guys, I have left rudder there. Gears going up. 
I had the left rudder all the way until after departure. All right. Let's begin our turn, and you feel the heaviness of the MD-80 as, uh, as we make the turn. Definitely does not feel like any other aircraft that I fly in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Uh, definitely very different than the Boeings and the Airbuses of the world. Has a very unique flight model. Right, we're looking good. Speed check. And flaps up. Flap zero. All right, we continue our turn. Speed check, slats are up. Let's set the Eper power to climb. Climb thrust set. All right, climb thrust is set, and we're gonna go to nav. And we're gonna turn on the autopilot, V nav. And now we have BNAV Climb, Nav Track, and FMS Eper. It's complaining about low speed. Look at that, ladies and gentlemen. Wow, this looks beautiful. Look at that. Wow. That looks sensational. All right, why well, is it still complaining about the speed? All right, it's fixing it. It's going to fix itself. All right, low speed is gone. VNAV climb. Everything is good. And uh, hey, Yannick, hello, my friend. Welcome aboard. Plane trip, welcome aboard, my friend. Glad to have you here. And uh, <clears throat> we are climbing now through to our cruise altitude. Everything looks good here, and we can come and disarm the speed brake. Speed brake is disarmed. We are approaching 10,000 feet. This is a really beautiful scene out of the MD-80 cockpit here. Uh, all right, we're right, let's take a look at the outside real quick. And here is a wing view. Just look at that, guys. That looks really good, I must say. Yeah, looks phenomenal. All right, 10,000 feet. Uh, let's go ahead and kill the landing lights. And we don't need the floodlights either or the wing lights. Anti-collision and strobes can remain on and everything else is looking in tip-top shape for our flight and our climb to 32,000 feet. Uh, typical MD-80 rocket climb, so cool, the engines uh, on back makes the climb different than other planes. Absolutely, wasn't that low speed because of icing? It could be, I don't know, uh, it might be. Uh, Adam James, uh, how's the performance now? Performance is absolutely great. Always nice to see you on YouTube. Well, thank you very much for uh, being here this evening, my friend. And uh, welcome to uh, the stream. Hello there, Justin. Welcome aboard. Uh, always watching your replays to help set the aircraft I'm flying. You're a great help. Well, thank you very much, Justin, for your kind words. And I'm glad that, glad that you find the channel content helpful. Hi, Far Captain. Hello, my friend. Welcome aboard. Do you have news on the new X-Craft E-Jets? Uh, I don't have any news that I can share. 
Uh, by the way, 5,000 feet, we should have set this to standard. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. 299 or 2 or 1013, barrel reference set to standard. And uh, everything now in tip top shape. Guys, look at the temperature, 3 Celsius. All right, and uh, we now continue our climb to 32,000 feet. Let's go ahead and take a look at the outside real quick. Look at that, ladies and gentlemen. What a beautiful sight. And this beautiful livery flying over this beautiful country. Yeah. Uh, super amazing 110, you can get my specs uh, by typing exclamation specs. Should be able to get them there. And we continue the climb to 32,000 feet. Very, very nice indeed. I think uh, I haven't really done that many flights during icing conditions, so it's going to be very um, interesting to see um uh, the landing uh, over at uh, our destination uh, the by the way the md80 has recently received an update from leonardo software uh bringing some fixes to the aircraft and uh yeah i i do like it a lot um I think it's uh, it's really. Uh, it, by the way, I totally believe it's worth its price. And uh, the aircraft, if you want to fly this aircraft uh, like the real, so if you want to operate it according to real world procedures, you can, uh, because the manual that ships with it is very detailed, and they haven't left anything out. So you can pretty much operate this aircraft like the real thing. So if you ask me, is, is this study level? I would probably say yes, this is a study level uh, representation of the MD-80, at least the most important uh, systems of the MD-80. Um, everything hydraulic, uh, the uh, fuel system, uh, the APU, everything is, is modeled properly, properly simulated. And uh, it's a wonderful aircraft to fly. It's a lot of fun. All right, let's go ahead and let our passengers... Uh, turn off the seat belt sign and non-smoking sign as well and they can now begin the in-flight service uh, for our about 100 customers uh, flying today to Santa Claus home airport hmm. why is the heading meter on screen not working heading meter hmm not sure which one you're referring to. All the instruments here are working. Right, 21, 22,000 for 32,000. We're looking good. We're about uh, 300 knots or so. So uh, today is Thursday. It marks the end of the working week here in Kuwait. And uh, I tell you guys, it's been, uh, it's been rather a hectic week uh, for me. It was a very stressful week. Today, though, uh, we ended the week on a... Uh, I took my... Uh, entire team at work to lunch. Uh, so we thought, you know, we break some ice and we get out of the 
work environment. And so I took them all to uh, a Lebanese uh, restaurant here in Kuwait uh, by the uh, Persian Gulf. And yeah, it was a nice outing. Uh, there was a lot of food, so I was pretty stuffed, but uh, <laughs> but it was a really nice outing. I like to do this with, with my team for, you know, you know, as as a you know team building exercise, I like to take them out, and uh, I actually order lunch at work every Thursday for the team for the entire IT department. Um, but I do it uh, this time. I decided to do it only for my uh, team members. Uh, my my team is comprised of about twenty seven people, so uh, <clears throat> so yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. We, we've enjoyed it. We really enjoyed it a lot. So it was kind of a a nice, uh, nice break from a very stressful week. Um, uh, your stream bar at the top, on the top bar of the, oh, uh, let me see here. Uh, let's see, I think you're talking about Sim Toolkit Pro? This guy, it should be working. I am really not sure why, but we can come always to live sim data everything is working here and if we go to streaming then this is the data that you guys are getting ah heading says and it that i don't know everything else seems to be working right but uh, yeah you are right it's not working i thought there was something wrong with the aircraft paradiski hello my friend welcome aboard glad to have you with us uh, during this live stream and uh, yeah, let's go back here to the passenger cabin. Again, I'll show you guys this uh, old passenger cabin. Uh, and uh, yeah, it does have, I, I mean, it's decent. It's, it's not great, but I think it's all right. It's a reasonably well modeled uh, passenger cabin. And we can come down here and take a look at the beautiful wing. There we go. Yeah. Pretty cloudy, uh, very cloudy conditions today. So we're not gonna see much of the uh, snow underneath uh, because of all these clouds. Uh, maybe it will subside as we uh, arrive uh, closer to our destination. But for the time being, yeah, it's not, uh, we can't really see much there. Saren, hello my friend, welcome aboard. Uh, hope, uh, can we hear the sounds in the cockpit yet? No, unfortunately we can't. That's the thing. Yeah, we can't. They did say in the latest fix, uh, Leandro Software, uh, in the release notes, that uh, they've fixed this issue, but uh, still I, I couldn't hear the engine sounds in the cockpit, so I assume that it is still not fixed. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. But this is this is one really nice cockpit. Just look at that. And by the way, if you go to any YouTube video and type in MD-80 uh, and look at the real aircraft, this actually looks very much like the real thing. Very, very uh, well-developed uh, aircraft for Microsoft Flight Simulator. I definitely, this is one of the aircraft I definitely recommend for Microsoft Flight Simulator. Uh, yeah, it does require a learning curve, and it's very, very different than Airbus and Boeing. And uh, if you, you know, if you are, you know, if you just want to sit in the aircraft and, you know, uh, just go and crash it and things like that, this is probably not for you, and you will not really enjoy it. My, my thing is, if you really want to learn how the MD-80 was operated in its time, and you have the time to go and read the manual and learn about the aircraft systems that would be the ultimate return on investment uh, if you decide to buy this aircraft if you're like me um you know half half and you're not going to get the full return on investment but i've used i've flown this aircraft for ages on um you know on on p3d and uh, I, i'm not sure if it was there for fsx i think it was um, so I've been flying the Leonardo software and I've flown this aircraft also for X-Plane for the longest time and I probably picked up a lot of, you know, bad habits about flying it. Um, 
but I'm in in a state where I'm very comfortable flying it. I understand the uh, you know the majority of the systems and how they operate, uh, how to establish electrical power, um, you know how to set up the uh, aircraft, uh, what is what is required to turn on the air conditioning system and what have you. Um, but yeah, definitely I am not getting the full uh, out of you know what I paid for the aircraft. That's for sure. And that's because I have not gone through the manual in details. Um, but if you like doing that, it is a learning curve, but it is one hell of an aircraft. It is uh, really just uh, a lot of fun, and it, it will, you will definitely enjoy it uh, if you like study-level aircraft. I have here the sands in the cockpit. Uh, I think there is an add-on that someone... Uh, yeah. There is a Saren, there is a um a uh FS something as uh, I think somebody on the community tab of the channel has uh, told me to try it out. Um I didn't really have time today for anything to prepare for the stream to be honest. Um because I was out with the team as I've indicated and I came in home late so I didn't really have much time to prepare or check out the sound set. So, uh, so maybe some other time. Um, Adam James, hello, my friend. Welcome aboard. Does it have auto throttle? Yes, indeed, it does have an auto throttle, and that is here. If you come here, so that is the auto throttle. It works at a little bit different than you know than the regular um, aircraft. Uh, essentially, it works the same way. Uh, but it has a really nice feature that I personally like a lot, which is the FMS override, uh, which you can basically, it will, you, you can leave the aircraft here. Once you click on FMS override, this speed is now controlled by the aircraft autopilot. And if you click on FMS override, you can change this speed to whatever you want. Um, so, and, and the auto throttle will respect whatever you enter, uh, whatever you dial here for speed. So it does work in a slightly different way. Um, and uh, the, yeah, overall, the, the, the way the air, so VNAV, for example, the function of VNAV normally is used for descent in, uh, in most aircraft, especially the newer ones. Whereas in, in the MD-80, it's a slightly different. So nav, VNAV, it will actually take the aircraft to, it will put it on the, track um the uh it's like the lnav and vnav if you will uh and on the boeing is is coupled in one button which is the vnav button uh which is kind of strange but uh you know it syncs everything uh the, the track as well as the altitude of the aircraft um it is strange a little bit but that's how it, it works uh another you know strange thing here is uh, or something different is the air conditioning system so when you turn on the apu we need the um th this is actually it, it the name is of this is very confusing because this is sort of kind of like the bleed um and this is another bleed uh, so this is kind of like the apu bleed if you will uh, but yeah so it, it's got some some things that are different uh, but everything is simulated, by the way. So if you look here, in, there are no inops, uh, very few inops, uh, things that don't really matter too much, things like the lights uh, and the volume of, you know, I, I think this is some sort of a speaker or something. Um, but for the most part, yeah, I think it, it everything is, is simulated in this, uh, in this aircraft. Um, all the radios here and uh, the thing, if we, I think the oxygen is here but it's not simulated, but this is, again, this is simulated, this is the mask for, uh, I'm not sure really what this does, mask PA and mask, uh, I don't know. <laughs> uh, oxygen system is fully simulated here, as you can see, you can see the regulated uh, pressure of the oxygen system. Uh, all the radios aboard the aircraft are properly simulated, and if you go to the back here, of course, those are not simulated so the circuit breakers aren't simulated they are modeled uh, nonetheless uh, just for kind of visual uh, visual reference that there are now these are simulated so these circuit breakers are all simulated here uh, so if you want to uh, 
Um, simulate failures. Uh, you can definitely do that with all the circuit breakers modeled here on this side. This is the emergency AC bus. Again, they are properly labeled, so you can know exactly what each one of these circuit breakers does if you elect to, you know, to, uh, you know, pull it and, and and simulate a failure, which is pretty good. I think that's really really cool. So yeah, definitely has a, a lot of good things. And uh, yeah, we continue now our cruise uh, over to uh, our destination. And we are, uh, let's see here, if we look at the progress, top of descent is in 193 nautical miles. Right, not too far now. And here's a look now at the external view. As you can see, this is a rather beautiful site of uh, the MD-80 uh, over Finland. So today we are flying a local flight. Just really gorgeous. All right, I'm gonna leave you guys with this nice wing view and I will take a very short break and we'll be right back. All right, guys, I am back uh, from my short break. And let's see, DEFCON001, just subscribe to the channel. Welcome aboard, DEFCON1. What is the typical cruise speed and altitude? So the service ceiling of the MD-80 is, I believe, 37,000 feet. Um, but the typical speed, I do not know what would be the typical speed, uh, but the... Um, the maximum speed for the MD-80, the McDonnell Douglas variant, is uh, 400, uh, about 500 knots uh, would be the maximum speed. Um, but the typical speed would be probably around 300 knots or so. Uh, but it is uh, capable of uh, doing uh, up to 500, uh, 500 uh, knots. Uh, that's about 574 miles per hour. And it's got a range of about uh, 2,000 nautical miles. So, uh, yeah, quite a capable aircraft. It, not very efficient, by the way, in terms of fuel. Uh, so it does burn a lot of fuel, uh, the MD-80. Yeah, but a lovely aircraft to fly in the sim, for sure. <laughs>
Right, we should be uh, descending shortly into uh, our destination. Uh, if we look here, the top of descent is in uh, 160 nautical miles. All right, what, what, what we'll do is uh, we're going to start setting up our performance for the landing. And if we go to the progress page here, uh, all right. So here you're going to look at the fuel, all right? So at top of descent, uh, this is this is actually our destination, Echo, Foxtrot, Romeo, Oscar, and the fuel there is going to be 4.5. So we are going to burn from where we are now uh, about uh, 1,000. Uh, actually, less less than 9,000, about 900 pounds. We'll say 1,000 1, pounds of uh, fuel uh, is going to be burned. Uh, so the current gross weight is 56,300. We're going to say uh, 55. We're going to say 55 even. All right. 55,000 is the gross weight uh, at landing. All right. So we're going to come here now and we're going to go to the landing page and we're going to start entering the information for our arrival. Echo, Foxtrot, Romeo, Oscar. And the conditions... Uh, Gee, I don't know what the conditions are. Let's take a look. Uh, let's take a look here. We're going to go to the weather. And the weather at the destination is going to be uh, overcast. Uh, guy, look at the uh, look at the wind, guys. Look at that. 190, 14 knot. That's going to be rough. Yeah, I'm going to tell you now. It's, it's going to be rough. And uh, the visibility is not very good. Uh, visibility is very bad, as a matter of fact, and uh, we're going to have some serious issues uh, <laughs> with the weather at the destination. So we might actually do, uh, maybe we'll have to uh, divert to, uh, to a different airport. Well, we'll worry about it when once we're there. If uh, we can't do it after a first go-round, if required, uh, then we'll have to divert. But we'll check this out once we are at our... Uh, closer to the approach all right uh, if by the way if if you want to decode this uh, you can always go to the sim brief plan and if you go to the flight summary page and go to the weather at the destination now you have everything decoded here if you're unable to read matars this is an excellent tool uh, to help you with uh, you know with the matar information and this is uh, the destination again you can see about 200 uh, 200 degrees 16 knot wind uh, and visibility is uh, is there's the visibility is not not there there's an overcast and visibility is pretty bad uh, so uh, almost virtually none so we might need to do an auto land uh, at our We'll see. Can we buy that aircraft? Yeah, of course you can buy it. Uh, if you type exclamation aircraft, you'll get the link to it uh, on the Sim Market store, and you are able to uh, purchase it. Yeah, for sure. So that's the weather information. It's going to be very rough, guys. Uh, but let's go ahead and enter the information into the. Uh, let's enter the information here. All right. So we're going to say the conditions are very poor. Uh, let's see, dry, no, poor, yeah, poor conditions. Uh, the wind is 216, 200, and 16. And the temperature is minus, minus 2, wow, freezing cold. All right, so minus 2 is set. We're going to add the reference of 5 there, and we're arriving into runway 2-1. Uh, we're going to do flaps full, 1540. And the Q&H at our destination is 1000. So 1000. And enter that. Reverse yes. Auto brake manual. Uh, we're going to use uh, mid, uh, mid uh, for auto brakes. And the landing weight is we're going to type in 55 even. All right. So 55 thousand enter and calculate all right so this is the actual landing distance uh and about two th three 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 miles 
and this these are our speeds the vref on 40 is 132 uh so yeah 132 i think we're gonna need more than that i think we need about 140 140 knots or so uh for the uh, for the landing all right all's good here all's good there we can remove that and uh if we come here to the initial reference we can see again the speeds it flaps 40 again it's confirming it's 131 or 132 but uh, i think we're going to need more the eyeless frequency is 111 decimal seven and the front course is 205 degrees so we're going to go ahead and set that 111 decimal seven so one 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 decimal seven we're going to set it on this side and two zero five for the approach course two zero five is set and we're going to do the same at the first officer side one eleven at point seven all right and two zero five for the approach course there we go and that is now set by the way, this need to go to cruise. We forgot about that. <clears throat> and uh, everything's good. Yeah. NM Flyer Robin. Hello, my friend. Welcome aboard. Mad Dog is the best. <laughs> Hello, hey, Sakata. How are you doing, my friend? I think I'm a bit late. Uh, I have to go to school in like 10 minutes, sadly. Shame. I miss a lot of your streams. No worries at all, my friend. Good luck at school. School is more important. Uh, I wish you the very best, and uh, you go and ace those uh, exams. All right, all is looking good, and uh, we are now approximately 106 nautical miles from top of descent, so we're getting pretty close now. Let's switch this back to uh, legs page. Excellent. There we go. Was on an American Mad Dog at least once a month for years back in the day. Yeah, those are uh, those were very popular aircraft back in the days for sure. As a quick reminder, guys, uh, so a few things coming on the channel in uh, on the 25th and the 26th of February, uh, I will be hosting a special stream uh, celebrating uh, the Kuwait uh, Independence and Liberation Days. And uh, on that occasion, I will be hosting a giveaway, a special special giveaway. Uh, so uh, make sure that you are tuned for that. And... Uh, <clears throat> <coughs> and uh, and then in uh, in March it's going to be the Fly Lilo month uh, of uh, at Rain. It's a fundraising event for Fly Lilo. And if you want to learn more, my very good friend Mark, uh, the Simhanger, has uh, put up a video to explain what Fly Lilo project is all about. And uh, that was a very kind thing of him to do. Uh, to do uh, an interview with Roberto, uh, who is uh, part of the Fly Lilo project. Uh, so it's uh, Roberto and Jalil, and uh, they were with us here on a few streams uh, in the past. And and what what they are doing for the disabled in our community is just very very uh, you know very warm. Uh, what they're doing, it's it's very uh, very kind. Uh, and uh, they, they, you know, I, I will always support these guys. So, uh, so that's going to be in March. Um, Q8, have you seen X Craft are giving away the free Embraer 175 and 195 for X Plane 11? Well, German, um, look, that was a. Uh, how should I put it? All right, so it's a good it's a good thing. All right, so it's a good thing that they've given this for free. But um, they probably do understand that they are not going to spend time porting those aircraft to X Plane Twelve. 
So, and they currently do not work properly in X-Plane 12. So you cannot start the engines properly. You have to hit uh, Control E to start the engines. Uh, and that means that th there will be no further development for X-Plane 12. And they probably also know that the, uh, you know, X-Plane 11 sales are going to go virtually to zero. So I don't think there is anyone investing in X-Plane 11 aircraft. So while this is from a, you know, marketing perspective, a good move in my view. And by the way, I love x -Crafts. I love the developers behind it. I enjoy a very good relationship with them. But I'm speaking my mind again here. The fact that they've done this is, is okay. But it offers zero value for the community in my view. Um, X-Plane 11 is a pretty much a now uh, a platform that will not be supported uh, in the very near future. Uh, so it's a, it's a dying platform. X-Plane 12 is the future of Laminar. So they will continue to support X-Plane 11, I think, for a short period. And then they will stop just like they did with X-Plane 10, X-Plane 9, and all that good stuff, right? And in terms of sales, they know it's probably, probably no one is buying that aircraft now. So making it free, I don't know. I, I don't think it's, it offers much, much value. Now, here is what would be something, if you ask me, is that they'll say, look, if you have the X-Craft 195, if you've purchased, you know, one or more of our aircraft, then you will get a special discount on the new X-Craft Embraer because we are no longer going to develop or support the X-11 uh, the, the, um, uh, version of our aircraft. Now that would be something. Uh, so uh, it could be, it could be a uh, philosopher Raptor. Thank you very much for being here. Um, I know, but it's good of them as I have x 11 and other drive and fly them. Yeah, I mean, like I said, it's, uh, um, it, it is a good thing that they're doing it, but, you know, it, it just offers no, not much value, really. Uh, I hope that it's an indication that they're nearing release. Uh, and I will tell you, um, uh, I tell you, I think one thing that I'm not bound by the NDA and I, and I can tell you, that uh, that it, it's going to be an aircraft that is um, the work of let me let me see how I want to say this uh, so that I don't breach the NDA so uh, the the aircraft is actually done with feedback from many real world Embraer pilots okay that's that's what I can say um, so the focus is really on getting an aircraft that very closely simulates the real thing. And that is by working with real-world Embraer pilots, many of them, not just one. And in fact, a lot of the beta testers, uh, some of them are actually real-world Embraer pilots. Uh, so uh, now I cannot tell you, of course, how accurate or non-accurate is, but that is the intention of uh, the team at XCraft. So I'm actually very excited for the community. Uh, and once the aircraft is uh, is available uh, for public uh, for the public, I will definitely make a full review uh, of the aircraft and I will give you guys my honest opinion. Uh, are you on the beta team? Yes, I am. Um, Aaron Knowledge Q8, when you can, could you fly the triple FF triple seven? Unfortunately, um, Aaron Knowledge, I wanted to fly this aircraft just as much as you want me to. Uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, it's got a lot of issues uh, and currently does not work uh, properly in uh, X Plane 12, and I no longer fly in X Plane 11. So uh, I'm I'm really sorry, but I will not be able to do that. Well, let's take a look here at the wing views here as uh, we approach our <coughs> destination. Very nice.
Lovely. Very detailed uh, model of the uh, MD-80. All right, we are, ladies and gentlemen, 43 nautical miles uh, from top of descent. So let's uh, consult our uh, Navigraph charts uh, really very quickly for the... Uh, let's go to Navigraph and let's unload that one and import from Simbrief. And we're going to select the latest flight here. And what we need is the initial approach uh, altitude uh, for... Uh, uh, for our destination so runway 21 as you can see we have 14 knots uh, headwind and uh, six knots crosswind that's going to be rough for sure uh all right so let's go to the airport charts we're going to select the approach runway 21 uh yankee that's the one we are arriving at so let's bring up the chart and if you look here 2400 is the uh, is the initial approach altitude. All right, perfect. Excellent. We don't need that anymore. And we can put this away as well. All right, we're going to set the MCP altitude to... Uh, let's see here. Two thousand. That's fine. And everything here is looking good. Okay. Perfect. All right. So the MCP altitude has been reset in preparation for our top of descent in about 29 nautical miles. And I'm going to, for the approach, what we're going to do is we're going to hide this here so we can see what's going on. And that's the top of descent now. We can see it. As a customer of these previous EJETs, you will get a discount towards buying the new EJETs family. They will likely cover the cost of your purchase. Uh, this is what they said. Well, that's great. If that's what they're going to do, uh, that would be great. Yeah. That I don't know. I haven't heard them, so. but I'm very glad. If that's what they're going to do, that's, uh, that's, that's great. Hey, JJ. Welcome aboard, my friend. Thanks for being here. Appreciate it, my friend. Thank you for your kind words as well. Something that bothers me about the Mad Dog is the fact that it seems to fly always like an F-18. Lands with quite a bit of... <laughs> it, it is, it is a, it's got a, it's got a, it's got its own character, uh, I have to say, yeah. Oh, I see, German, uh, it's on the Ark Store. I see, I, I haven't read it, so... Uh... Uh, nice contribution. You mean, yeah, Bill. Yeah. Uh, I think, uh, you know, where we can uh, help the disadvantaged, uh, you know, I, I always uh, I always like to do that whenever I can. And, uh, yeah. All right, we are just about to begin our descent now. Oh, there, Brandon Dell. How is it going? The latest update of the MD-82 fixed the unusually high pitch when using flaps 2840. Yes, that is correct, uh, Brandon. I've noticed that in a test flight uh, that they fixed that, which is, uh, which is pretty cool. <coughs> and uh, you know what, guys? Uh, just so that I don't break the immersion while we approach, uh, let me find out uh, flight control replay for MSFS. <laughs> I always forget to turn this thing on. So, uh, yeah, so we have it on now, so we don't break the immersion later. You might just see a black screen there for a second uh, as uh, I start the program. Uh, got a dash. Take care, Q8. No worries, Caden. Take care, my friend. Q8, uh, you are one amazing fellow. So generous. Well, German, thank you very much, guys. Appreciate it. 
Thank you. All right, let's see here. What is wrong with our uh, call attending reset? All right. They're probably announcing the uh, descent. Oh, that is just beautiful view. There's an aircraft there, the same altitude, right next to us. And here's now. The top of descent works uh, kind of like Boeing. Um, so when you hit the top of descent, the aircraft automatically descends. Um, sort of like the... Uh, Yeah, the, um, thank you very much, George, for the METAR. Uh, as you can see, the weather conditions uh, are pretty bad. <laughs> so, uh, all right, so that's top of descent. And as you can see now, the aircraft has begun the automatic descent towards our uh, destination. And, Yeah, we're going to go to 2,000 feet. Uh, everything now is managed by the aircraft's uh, flight management computer. Uh, and uh, we are going to... I'm, I'm going to bring up some lights into the cabin here. Uh, because it's kind of getting a little bit dark. Uh, let's see here. Flood lights as well. Digital. There we go. We're going to come to the first officer's side as well. And we'll give it some light here as well. Flood lights. There we go. So we can see things a little better. And uh, let's see here. Do we have anything here? I think those lights are... I always forget with where the lights are. Ah, there we go. All right, so panel... Digital floodlights. There, that's much better. I think that's uh, much better considering the time of day. As we arrive, uh, we're going to need to see the instruments very clearly on this uh, on this approach. And I am going to uh, ignore the FMC calculation of 131 knots, and I'm going to go for 140 knots. Right, 26,000 for 2,000. We're looking good. And at some, uh, if we look here now, our speed is, uh, we're still okay here, but uh, at, at about uh, 11,000 feet, we are going to switch to FMS override and we're gonna start reducing our speed. This is one hell of an approach. Look at those beautiful clouds. Look at that. That looks really good, I must say. All right. <clears throat> Can you input the use of engine NTIs on your FMC like Boeing? Engine NTIs. So if you come into the, uh, let's see here. All right. So here, if you have, this is the windshield anti-fog and anti-ice. So this is only for the windshield, but if you want the engines and the airfoil or kind of like the wing anti-ice, if you will, then you can definitely do this. This is also the uh, meter selector and heat, this uh, uh, for the pitots, um, but you can, this is also for the tail. So you can actually turn this, uh, let's see here. This one is not moving. All right, so now uh, left engine valve. So now this is, it says left engine anti-ice is on. So kind of like Boeing, it's not exactly like Boeing. Uh, but now you can see that the engines now we can also turn on this is the uh, uh, airfoil uh, as well so ice protection is now turned on 
so this is now we have all the uh, anti-icing uh, systems working uh, in the aircraft. So it is kind of like Boeing, uh, the, like any other aircraft, uh, where uh, icing, uh, anti-icing uh, system is uh, fully simulated uh, on the aircraft and, of course, uh, required. Um, you've got your wipers as well here. Let me show you that. There you go. Slow and fast. And then like the real MD-80, you need to go to park to park them. Uh, and then they will go to the uh, stowed uh, position. We are now at 18,000 feet. It says drag required. All right. Let's see here. What is going on with the speed? All right. Looks like our speed is uh, increasing a little bit. So let me... Uh, deploy the speed brake and get our speed down a little bit guys look at this beautiful scene here as we approach our destination Right, 15,000. All right. Uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to begin actually decreasing our speed. So I'm going to go to FMS Overwrite, and I'm going to start reducing our speed to 250 knots. Now with the MD-80, you need to be very careful with the speed, without a doubt. And uh, we have uh, Edger Antonio, welcome, and Alex Santana. Welcome, guys, to the Q8 Pilot channel. Thank you very much for your support and your subscription here at the channel. Right, we're coming to, uh, let's go ahead and uh, disengage the speed brake now. All right, we're going to make sure also that, by the way, you see here it says VNAV Descent. Uh, again, this is taking care of the uh, uh, the autopilot system. And uh, let's see here. Uh, by the way, this is your TCAS. So we don't need it since we're not flying in with the online ATC. But here, we're going to come to the auto brake. And uh, uh, we've set this to medium uh, based on the calculation. So we're going to set this to medium and arm it. Uh, ah, you, it's okay. So medium, that's for the brakes. So you only need it to arm it for the takeoff. All right. So, uh, yeah, that was my bad. Okay, so everything here is looking good. And uh, we are ready now. Excellent. We are at about 250 knots, 13,000 feet. We continue our descent steadily. We are, as you can see here, very close now to uh, our destination. And depending on the visibility, we might do an auto land or go around or divert uh, so that will depend on the conditions uh, once we arrive uh, into our uh, destination hopefully uh, we'll do it uh, yeah barrow is uh, set at uh, 5,000 feet uh, which is the transition altitude uh, at uh, Rovaniemi Osama Mohammed, hello, my friend. Welcome aboard. How have you been? Thanks for being here, my friend. Yeah, the cockpit lighting is sensational on the uh, MD-11, without a doubt. Right, we're looking uh, good. All right, let's go ahead and set the speed to 230 knots. And I'm going to extend the speed brakes again to help reduce our speed quicker. We're approaching 10,000 feet. Landing lights are coming on. 
landing uh, nose lights and the floodlights and the wing lights. Excellent. All right, there we go. Speed brakes disarmed. And here is a look at this uh, beautiful MD-80 or the Mad Dog. Kind of looks like a... I don't know why it reminds me of a pit bull. <laughs> I love it. Right, we're looking good in terms of the altitude now. A bit tad too high. All right, and uh, we are, all right, 8,000 feet. That's good. All right, let's go ahead and set the barrel reference. Uh, let's see here. All right, so the altimeter is 100, zero, zero, is 1,000. So we're going to set that to 1,000. There we go. 1,000 is set. And... Cross-checked. Perfect. Hey, there, Scott. How are you doing, my friend? Thank you very much for being here, Scott. I appreciate it, my friend, and thank you for your kind words. Private E, how are you doing, my friend? Uh, what flight controls are you using? I'm using the Alpha Flight Control, or the bigger, uh, the Honeycomb Alpha Flight Control, and the HOTUS uh, Throttle. Right, we are looking good. All right, now I'm going to start reducing our speed to 200 knots. There we go, 200. And I'm gonna extend the speed brakes again. And take it down to 200. We are at 6,000. Again, the MD-80 has uh, a lot of power, and it's a very big and very heavy aircraft. Uh, it's also very long, so uh, the dimensions, the way, when you come to land the MD-80, it, it, the, it's very different from the Boeing and uh, the Airbus, uh, and it, it does take some practice to get it right, and hopefully today we'll do it right. But uh, we'll see what happens. All right, that's uh, again the drawing there of the flight plan isn't very, isn't very good, but that's okay. All right, we're gonna go to 180, 185. All right, there we go. And that's our turn. We're gonna go ahead and turn on ILS. All right, and we're gonna retract the speed brakes, arm the speed brakes. And I'm gonna bring up the slats. Slats extended. Slats 15. Wow, look at that, guys. I'm not sure what's going on and why. It's, uh. Alright, let's go 1,000 feet.
The weather is very, very bad. Um, okay, we're going to use Auto Land here. Let's see what happens there. All right, we're going to use Auto Land and uh, Flaps 40. Right, Flaps 40 and gear is going down. Gear down, 3 green. All right, 185. Let's go to 160. Actually, we're going to set this to uh, 142, 140. And let's see. If we do get the runway in sight, uh, uh, I will. We will disconnect and we'll hand fly the aircraft. If not, we'll just uh, watch the auto land. I don't know if it works or not, but we'll see. Hopefully, it will. You know, we'll, we'll get better visibility, uh, but we'll see. Ah, by the way, uh, we did not t uh, turn on the flight control replay. So let's make sure that we... Okay, so, all right, let's record. And what we're going to call this is... Uh, quickly here, just record one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, there we go. Excellent. So we're now recording the approach. We're a tad uh, too high. But visibility is very bad, guys. Very, very bad. Alright. Uh, autopilot is somehow disengaged. Alright. So, autopilot, if we turn it back on, it should do its thing. I definitely can't see a thing still. Aha! I can see the runway in sight. I can see the Pappy lights, or not the, the runway lights. Pappy lights are now visible. Looks like there is some icing there. Uh... But still very, very bad. Uh, all right, I think we can have it. L let's go ahead and turn off the auto uh, autopilot. Autopilot is off, and my aircraft, let's go ahead and turn off the auto throttle as well. And my aircraft. Just in the nick of time, we were able to see the runway Very strong wind. Gee, the wind is so strong. Wow. Reversers out, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Santa Claus official airport here in Finland. Reverse lights out. All right. Minus 248 FPM, considering the uh, 16 knot gusting wind, I'll take it. 60 knots. All right, here we go. The uh, weather conditions are pretty bad, uh, but we've made it safely here. 
Uh, very difficult to steer the aircraft on the ground. But we've made it! Yeah! Yeah, I'm very glad that uh, we're all in one piece, ladies and gentlemen, uh, without incident. So that's cool. Very nice uh, airport uh, as well here. Again, by MK Studios. And by the way, if we click here, we can see where we landed. So, very good. Excellent on the touchdown zone. And uh, not a good, good landing rate as well. We're going to go to... Uh, which position is that? Position 8. So, let's go to stand 8. Looks like it's raining, snowing, uh, all sorts of things. Uh, so yeah, it was uh, definitely lots of fun. Right, there we go. I can't really see much. Um, yeah, there are the uh, Santa's reindeers, without a doubt. All right, let's see here. Cabin heat. is full. The aircraft isn't moving. <laughs> All right, there we go. Excellent. Ooh, beautiful. Thoroughly enjoyed it. That was a lot of fun, I must say. All right, parking brake is set. Uh, all right, so let's go ahead and take a look at uh, our landing. And uh, thank you very much, Carl. Appreciate it. Uh, I'll leave the wing lights uh, NM flyer because if we turn them off, we'll be not able to see them in the replay. So I will leave them on for the time being uh, until we're done with uh, our replay. All right, so let's go to flight control replay. And we're going to load our flight, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, if I can find it. Uh, first, let's say stop. Stop. All right. And all right, let's see. Let's try this again. Load. All right, there we go. Um, there we go. That's our flight plan. Open. Excellent. And now play. All right, here we go. And that's our. I mean, look at this. This really beautiful aircraft. The volumetric uh, lights there. With the contrails. Yeah. And that's uh, probably when I disconnected the autopilot. Lighting is very well done, uh, Carl, yeah. I really wish they did uh, better sounds. I, I, I definitely shared that uh, thought with you there, and you being. And thanks for being here, my friend. That's the runway in sight. The wind was definitely crazy as uh, we came into land. Sixteen, uh, sixteen knots headwind and six knots crosswind. Look at that.
definitely uh, they fixed the pitch problem uh, so we don't see the aircraft pitching up like we did in my previous uh, stream uh, of course a lot of it was also pilot induced uh, but this looks sensational look at that ladies and gentlemen wow that looks really good Yeah. And here's a look from a different perspective for you guys. Here's what we can do. Uh, let's bring up our light control replay. And what we're going to do is just put the aircraft here. All right. And stop. And remove that. And if we remove that, now we can actually turn things off. Uh, so what we're going to do is uh, we're going to come to... First, we can turn off the lights. Uh, let's see here. I can't see a thing. So let me just turn those lights on a little bit so we can see better. Uh, where is the lights here? forget where the lights are for the overhead panel uh, gee I don't remember I can't remember where those lights are I know it's got one but I'm not sure it's floor lights All right, well, let's do the following. Let's uh, start the APU. All right, APU should start in a minute. There we go, the APU is now starting. Yes, uh, horrific life at 261. All right. Um, all right. So we're starting the APU. We can turn off the landing lights for sure. And we're going to come here and turn off the floodlights and the wing lights. Uh, we're going to put the position lights, uh, anti collision lights. We'll leave them on for now. And we're going to go ahead and kill the engines. That's another thing uh, that I'm not sure why we can't kill the engines. Hmm. Very strange. All right, let's go to APU. Right, APU power is on and uh, the generators are off look at the uh, light glow there looks phenomenal very very nice all right and let's see if we can kill I'm not sure why you can't uh, you can't kill the fuel the buttons just won't click hmm all right Let's uh, come here and uh, do one thing. Let's call GSX. You need to stop the engines to request ground yeah, services. Yeah, obviously. Uh, I'm not sure how we can kill the uh, engines now. Uh, Q8 used the scroll wheel over the fuel cutoff to make it turn off. Really? 
Oh. Thank you for that. Appreciate it. All right, and we're going to start deboarding. Request deboarding. Boarding requested. All right. Strange looking uh, jetways there. Robin Yemi. Is that how you say it? Uh, I mean, I know we have had. The boarding starting. We have a new member with us. I uh, can't see. Moby2172, welcome to Commercial Pilot, my friend. Welcome aboard. Thank you very much for your support. I appreciate it. <laughs> Guys, look at that. Uh, although I downloaded a, a GSX uh, profile for this, but uh, looks like, uh, yeah, we we're, were probably not parked properly. I don't know, but the passengers are kind of <laughs> going all over the place there. But anyway, guys, uh, I think uh, this was a, a really very enjoyable flight, at least on my part. I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. Uh, it was a lot of fun flying the Mad Dog. Uh, over Finland, uh, probably an area of the world that I haven't flown around uh, that much, so I think uh, this was a uh, kind of overdue uh, to, to fly in this beautiful part of the world uh, aboard this uh, Finnair uh, aircraft. Um, well, that is uh, pretty much it for uh, tonight's uh, show, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I will be back uh, again, of course, as usual on Saturday. I'm not sure if I'm going to uh, do a video. Uh, there is a couple. Uh, there are a couple of aircraft for X-Plane 12 that I still haven't reviewed. Uh, so I was thinking about that, or perhaps we do uh, a quick uh, update on the Parallel 42 package, which I think is a great package, by the way. Uh, so I'm not exactly sure what is going to. Uh, come in terms of content, but what I am sure of is I will be definitely streaming uh, again on Saturday, and it will more than likely be uh, an x 12 stream. Guys, I want to thank you very much for tuning in uh, this evening. Until next time, please take care of yourselves and each other, and I will see you all very soon. Thanks for tuning in, and bye-bye for now.